Hello, how are you? This is uh, Congressman David Scott, Chairman of our House Agriculture Committee, and first I want to thank you for inviting me to give a few remarks uh, today. As a man of great faith myself, I have tremendous respect and admiration for the work Bread for the World is doing. It is magnificent work, and I'm proud to be associated with you because your reputation speaks loudly for the great work that you're doing. Um, and uh, I wanted to actually illustrate how we're putting your faith into great work in pursuit of ending harmer hunger, and we can do it. And as the first African-American uh, chairman of this outstanding House Agriculture Committee, I am very interested in the discussions Bread for the World is having. Also, your Creation Justice Ministries doing a fantastic job. And the Rural Coalition have had tremendous success with our black farmers in our great country. And I was pleased to have worked with the Rural Coalition on outreach and equity issues that uh, we've had in several farm bills. And again, on the funding and the, the uh, authorities in what became our Inflation Reduction Act. It's doing a good job, ladies and gentlemen, and addressing the single most important issue we're facing. And we're doing a great job with that. The general themes identified in your working paper resonated with me and with the things I have heard from witnesses at our committee hearings and from our farmers all across the country. And during my time as chairman, I have been a champion for equity in agriculture. My very first hearing was in March of 2021, and it was a hearing to review the state of black farmers in the United States. And I noted at that hearing some of the decades of discrimination against black farmers by the United States Department of Agriculture. We've got to recognize it. We've got to tell the truth on this issue in order to solve it. Truth must prevail. We can't hide it. We've had uh, the racial challenges, the Civil War, but they were an instrumental part of our great nation's history that we have learned from and that we are working together to address. And at that hearing, I was able to see uh, the hearing as a way to publicly acknowledge and address the deep mistrust that many of our black farmers feel towards the United States Department of Agriculture. And I also wanted to make it clear that agriculture cannot and will not ignore or leave behind individuals who want to contribute to our increasingly very competitive agriculture economy. We're number one in the world. We have the world's greatest economic system and financial system. I'm privileged to be chairman of our agriculture committee. At the same time, I'm also a senior member on financial services. And I feel the greatness of those two issues working together to help us to address these tight issues that we have in agriculture, making sure that is here for everyone 
uh, regardless of race, creed, or color, and uh, making great contributions, and at the same time making sure it's profitable, and that we're able to keep going as we are going. And um, I wanted to make it clear that agriculture is, without question, our number one industry. I say that all the time, but folks, you can do without a lot of things, but you cannot do without food, without water, without shelter, without clothing. These are the basic items of necessity. And while some of the legislative aspirations that we had hoped to accomplish during this Congress was held up by some legal balance, uh, battles, I am very encouraged by provisions that we have made in our recent Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, which I led on the floor and was very privileged to get past, but we had a lot of help doing that. I certainly want to thank my Republican ranking member, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Thompson, who's worked with me on this left and right. And I want to send a special thank you to my good friend, Stanley Hoyer, who gave one of the greatest closing remarks on a bill that I have heard, uh, period, and I told Stenny so. And I also want to thank my good friend, Jim McGovern, who is our chairman of our rules and my longtime partner in dealing with hunger and food. We're all working this together, and we're coming up with great work in this upcoming Farm Bill and the activities we have to do to get ready for the next big appropriations bill. Um, and among uh, uh, the figures that we have gotten through our agriculture credit, our agriculture research and inclusion efforts, we are providing $6 million in investments to support these critical areas that certainly have an impact on our great diversity. And among this uh, figure includes critical aid for underserved farmers, ranchers, and forest landowners, and support of our 1890s uh, and 94 land grant colleges and universities student support program. And I might add that it's been so successful. And I'm very appreciative of our committee having passed the bill that now will continue this 1890s scholarship program, but add $100 million to this program. And most importantly, make this 1890s land grant colleges and universities student scholarship program permanent so that for generations to come, we will have students with opportunities at these fine institutions, black farmers, white farmers, women farmers, Hispanic. The beauty about the land grant schools are these 1890s black land grant schools, they have students coming from every race and background, and they will have a chance on their own merit to earn a scholarship with their high grades and maintain it. And that's what makes this program so great and why we will definitely continue it, add $100 million and make it uh, permanent. I'm so grateful for that. And uh, we want to also make sure that we help our small families, farm and ranchers. Folks, I had a hearing on that, one of the most well-watched hearings. It was a dramatic hearing. Our, we are losing right now, at last count, 17,000 small rancher farms 
in our country every single year. And on top of that, we're losing the other side of the cattle industry, our dairy. We're losing a dairy farm every single day. And I am determined to make sure we stop it. We're already putting in to the margins program to help our dairy people. We got language, you're already there, getting additional funding to help stem the tide of losing a dairy farm every day. We can't go along. That Lord knows 17,000 small ranchers and farmers every year. And uh, um, over the last eight years, so many of our farmers have not even made a profit. And so this is why I feel the good Lord got me here, not just because I was black or the first black chairman, but because I'm grounded in finance. I got my MBA from the greatest school of finance in the world, the Wharton School of Finance. Served several years as a, a member of their executive board of directors. And then getting my other training at Florida Agriculture and Mechanical School, FAMU. So the Lord is preparing you for a lot of things. And I'm here in this position because of all the wonderful people that the good Lord has sent to help me with these issues, stopping these loss of farms, keeping our family farms secure, making sure we can get and make sure we can do the proper thing with getting this carbon back into our earth. The whole effort of regeneration is critical. Remember, it is Mother Earth. We don't call it Mother Earth for anything. It is the Mother. The good Lord scooped you and me up from there. It is the soil that is the beginning of our food supply chain. And we've got to take care of that soil. We've got to hurry up and, and uh, catch up with all of this uh, uh, fertilizer that Russia, Russia now, by the latest statistics, has produced 66%, uh, two thirds of all the world's fertilizer. And when they put uh, Russia with the Ukraine, where all this trouble is going on, this war, they control up to 30% of all the wheat and the corn. And this domination of fertilizer. Now we put some information in the um, inflation bill to start moving us to start developing our own fertilizing system. And we got money that we're going to add into the farm uh, bill for that. And as we turn our eyes to the next Congress, the farm bill is, of course, uh, right topical in mind, mind, in mind. And in the 2018 farm bill, as uh, we mentioned, I was proud to establish the scholarship program for our 1890 land grant. Uh, universities, and uh, we were able to, and this is, and I, I am so grateful that it is bipartisan. This is a biracial bill. It is one of those sterling examples of what the American people are asking for, Republicans and Democrats, all of us, coming together. There are issues there that can only be solved if Democrats and Republicans work together. And so we've got to lead the way and thank God for the opportunity of doing so. And additionally, I'm looking forward to reviewing the recommendations from the USDA Executive Commission and I will pursue opportunities to incorporate some of their recommendations in the Farm Bill wherever I can. And folks, 
let me just leave you with this as I may. And this is from that glorious song in the night that God has given you and me. Them that's got shall get, and them that's not shall lose. Because the Bible says, and it still is news, your mama may have and your papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. And God bless our wonderful world of agriculture. And we thank God for all of you who are working together to make this farm bill the absolute best. God bless you and thank you. Bye-bye.